Hi, do you know IB Physics actually has something that is not in the syllabus, so they did not write it in the curriculum. The textbook will not tell you how to do it, but you need to know how to do it in your IA properly. Let me show you a simple but challenging question so that you know what I'm talking about. Go and learn this today. You will come back and thank me for teaching you this after a few months or one year later. So in the previous video or in the data booklet, you can see that uh, IB has covered the case where if you try to process a data with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or with a certain index, you can handle that, you can calculate that. But what if it is some sort of function? What if it is sine function, log function, or what if it's exponential function? So here's a challenging question. Do you know this gentleman? He's called Sir René Descartes. He is one of the giants in philosophy because he was the one that said, I think, therefore I am. He's also one of the greatest mathematicians because he invented the Cartesian coordinate, that is the X and Y coordinate that you are using right now. Nani? He's also a great physicist as well because he is the one that discovered the Snell's law. Strongly recommend you to go and check out the story of his life. He is such a great mind in the history. Okay, so let's say you are his lab assistant and you need to do some analysis for him. So let's say you are doing a Snell's law experiment simply of a refraction using a laser. I don't know whether laser was invented by that time, but let's assume there was a laser. And so what you do is you have the incident angle to be 50 degree and you've also measured that the refracted angle is 35 degree with the absolute uncertainty to be 1 degree and 2 degree respectively for some reason. And so what I want to ask you is, what is the refractive index of that medium? Of course, I'm going to ask you to apply the idea of Snell's law, which is m1 sine theta 1, n2 sine theta 2. You may assume uh, for the air, the refractive index is 1. So this is basically um, different here. However, the other thing is, you are not just calculating the refractive index N2, the value of this only, but you also have to evaluate its absolute uncertainty. So when you express it, it should be N equals to N0 plus or minus delta N. So this is the most important thing that I would like you to find out. You can see on my screen, I have written that there are two approaches in total. You can solve it. Of course, there are actually more than two, which involve maybe even more complicated maths. But with the maths that you know in high school, you will be able to do two approaches at least. So I want you to pause the video now, think about what you can do, at least try to think of one approach, uh, or at least try to think of at least maybe five minutes, I would say, all right? Then you pause, um, then you continue the video, and I'll show you how we can do it with two different approaches. 2,000 years later. Okay, so the first approach is the most intuitive one, or right, I'll call it intuitive approach. So what you can do is simply try to find out the maximum and minimum value of n by substituting the number into it. So first of all, let's rearrange the refractive index. So that should be n sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. So think about the maximum and minimum of n that you can find. And that will be for maximum, you will be able to substitute the number because this one is supposed to be 50. And uh, to make it bigger, let's do 51 because it's plus or minus 1 degree. So 51 degree. And you want to divide a smaller number to make it bigger. So I suppose you know how the graph will look like when sine function go from 0 degree to 90 degree. So obviously, uh, you want to choose 33 degree uh, because it's 35 and then you can minus 2 in this case. So by using your calculator, and uh, make sure that you are in the degree mode, 
then you'll be able to find 1.4269 okay by applying the same method then you can find the minimum of refractive index so um, let me just show you so this time we will choose 49 degree because once again it's 50 minus 1 so you want to make this number smaller and then we we'll go with the sine 37 degree so then the base of the fraction is bigger then obviously the whole number will be smaller again apply your calculator you will get the answer of 1.254 or 1 okay so you can see that it's a huge difference you may think that hey uh, 1 degree 2 degree doesn't seem to be a lot but in fact this is a huge difference because if you, when you look at the number it's 1.4 and 1.2 so if you try to really express the answer in the form of n log plus or minus delta n what you can do is by looking at this value and this value so um, I would do it as n equals to the two value that add together so 1.4269 plus 1.2541 divided by 2 so that will be 1.3405 plus or minus the half range of these which is one point again the two number minus this time divide by 2 and that should give you 0 0.0864 and in order to follow our rule of thumb that to keep the uncertainty with one sigfig only then we have to do it with 0 0.08 or 9 actually I'll do it for 9 and so I we can only keep it for the second decimal so that means this one is 1.3 four then okay so this will be the final answer for your result so that means for your for your refractive index you have uh, such a range which tells you that the actual percentage error if you really want to calculate then that is going to be 0, 0 0.09 divide 1.34 that's about 6.7% so I guess it's still okay um, but then yeah it, it's still it's still I guess it's more than you expect when you only see one degree of two degrees it seems to be quite small for the second approach is quite hard to think of at least I can't think of that I, I just went to Google and find out whether or not there's a certain way in general to do it uh, maybe like a formula or so so what I can find out eventually is this document which is probably the easiest one to follow you can also see that in this document they also mention about the addition subtraction multiplication and division using this kind of formula which are different from the one that we use so here I think is a way for you to see that there are different ways of estimating the error and this is actually a very important part in mathematics as well so uh, for different approaches they may be of the different uh, accuracy so uh, in IB we just want you to have at least a certain approach to finding out the uncertainty that will be good enough so back to our actual question since we want to deal with an equation that involves sine right so you can see here here is a sine function and so what you have to do is if you want to find the uncertainty of a sine function you can act you have to actually find the derivative of it so you have to differentiate it so in case you don't know how to differentiate here's the answer simply and that will be cosine a and so that is to say if you have a formula uh, that is f then that would equals to cosine a times delta a delta a is the original uncertainty so from the raw data so in our case would be the one degree and two degree thing however you need to pay attention that the delta a like let's say in our case would be one degree and two degree has to be in radian you cannot do degree so that is to say uh, if we want to find the uncertainty of n probably it's better to find the uncertainty for 
sine theta 1 and theta 2 as well. So by looking at our formulas provided here, then we should do cosine, this should equal to cosine the angle which is 50 degree. Here you can use degree because you are computing an actual value with the function anyway. However, you have to multiply with the uncertainty that is 1 degree in radian. So the way to convert it could be 1 over 180 because 180 degree equals to pi. So uh, this is one way of showing the uncertainty of sine theta 1. Similarly, we can do the same thing for sine theta 2 and that would be cosine 33, is it? 30, sorry, 35 degree times, because that will be 2 degree of uncertainty according to the scenario that I set, then this will be the uncertainty. So we can actually calculate that first. Okay, so we can then, using the calculator, finding out the two answer, which is one is one, 0, 0.01 something, the other one is 0 0.028 something. And the next step will simply be what you do normally, since and uh, this calculated by sine theta 1 divided sine theta 2. So this is like what you do uh, in the past as well. So you can do delta n over n log equals to delta sine theta 1 over sine theta 1 log plus same for the delta uh, theta 2. With the answer from what we get above, so we can be a bit lazy here, so then we can just find delta n over 1.34 right because we calculated earlier and then you can simply put the whole number and below will simply be again the sine 50 and sine 35 Okay, and so then you just have to use your calculator to find out the answer. After a long time of pressing a calculator, you should find the answer to be 0 0.09714, something like that. Uh, it might be slightly different depending on uh, where exactly you cut off the decimal place. So that should run up to one sec fake once again, so that should be 0 0.1. Okay, so you may find this is a bit different from what we find in the earlier session uh, which is 0 0.09 but then you can see they are quite close together so uh, I hope that can convince you that this method uh, is also valid and in fact I would believe this method should be more accurate as well because this is more justified mathematically so here it is you can now calculate with different other more complicated formula like you can see the log function, exponential function, cosine and tangent as well. If you still have other kind of function that you don't know what to do, I would say just go for the intuitive method. If you find this video useful and inspiring, smash the like button now and subscribe to my channel.